my name, right? Yeah. Okay. My name is Maribel Rosales, and this is my great cousin. Perdita Espinosa. And then, well, my experiences, like, through within the Pony League? Yes. Well, my daughters are a new, newer generation Pony. Mine came in about, about three, four years ago. And um, my experience is, I guess, the, I can see since I'm a girl, and my daughters are girls. I have one son, but he's younger than they are. I, I see the difference since I get to experience both sides of the fence. Um, my daughters, they they kind of get like the lower end of the spectrum in regards to the respect or or what's given to them, essentially. They get a lot of hand-me-downs. If you notice, if you ever go to a pony, especially the baseball, the new catcher's equipment is given to the boys first as opposed to the girls. Um, even I know my sister experiencing with another city, like the class, they don't close. But on the boys, you won't see that because they'll, they'll address it faster because the parents are more uh, like meaner about it. The, the moms on the girls' sides, they really don't. Um, oh, she's older, she is. And then um, <laughs> I think the competitiveness on the guys and the girls, um, two years ago, right, I believe it was, we didn't play that much in the city. We were right out the majority of the season. Yes, and so our money went to waste. If we paid, we played, and if we didn't, we didn't. If we got rescheduled, it did, and it didn't. So it was, uh, our money was down the drain for the ones that have more than one kid within the city. Um, I I haven't gotten like a real good good season yet. My mine won't come back maybe for another year. They'll come back in for pony within the city. But Benny's experience was totally different. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Back in the day, there were uh, not too many females, even though there were some out there. But they all played in one team. There wasn't like this girls versus girls and boys versus boys. And it wasn't about the schools either. It wasn't about the ages. You know, everybody you know, had the Mustang, the T-ball, you know, Bronco. And at one time, they didn't have no uh, vote. You know, like for about 15, 16 years old. And uh, we became the first team that uh, my cousin put our team together. So we could beat those I want. Everybody had one except for someone. But it was it's about. Cold yeah, cold, yeah, cold division, yeah. And uh, we only, even though we only played uh, two seasons, but uh, the cold division kept on going, you know. So we don't know if it still exists. What's the division? Colt. Oh, the Colt. That's yeah. right. Oh, the 15, 16. Yeah, 15, 16. Yeah. I don't think there is a Colt division. Yeah. Nor do I, como they get UIO based eventually. Yes. We don't we don't know uh, if a cold division exists. Okay, so you you formed the first cult division yeah, baseball my, team. My cousin, uh, he was a, a good coach, he coached uh, boys up football and uh, baseball and poly. Look back to this. Yeah, he was the one who formed that, that team. He, 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 he kept on coaching until you know, someone had two teams. All of a sudden, everybody started going to the whole division. And someone had two teams. And it was uh, so one of the ones, one of the two. And it was a lot, a, lot, a lot about it was about politics. You know, the bigger name families would stick together and put their, their all you know, the kids in one team. And then we you know, I'm supposed to be number one every you know, year after year, you know. But, uh, nobody would give up about you know, competing anyway, you know. But nowadays, I think it's more about the money, and they take their money, and uh, they don't even play. <laughs> so, and what was the name of your coach? Luke Martinez. Luke Martinez? Luke? Luke, Luke yeah. Luke. And Coke, yeah. I was a coach in the Mustang. We went back to back, back in the 80, 90, 90. First place. And what year was the first Colt team? The first Colt team was a, uh, probably 80, 86, you know, 86. they had before, they had before, but then they, uh, disbanded because they didn't have no 15, 16 year old that wanted to play. So they had to disband the Colts and then, uh, we came around and we formed it again. I don't know if it's not it, but it was about 86, 87. Yeah, it was about 86, 87. Yeah, it was about 86, 87. Yeah, it was about 86, 87. And uh, but before that, I was just a coach in the Mustang. And uh, it 
it was, it was good. Like I said, we had girls and boys in the same team. We in the same team. Yeah. And playing baseball together. Yeah, but nowadays I see there's more, uh, I hear there's more uh, little girls playing compared to we were before. So but, I, but I mean, they keep on, I mean, I hear my cousin, she's a coach. And they keep on, the uh, umpires they have, the blues, they change, you know, the rules every game. That's true. That's not, <laughs> that's not fair, you know, I mean, I wish I could still see. That would be my cousin, my cousin could go out there and just form a team and we got the rule. I mean, every time somebody was wrong, my coach was there, look, you know, even, even if we were playing, he was there. And pull out the rule book and show the blues, hey, this is what's supposed to be going on. You are not doing the right, you know, the right job. And, but he's over there now with the cartoon, so, <laughs> you know. But if he was here, he would, you know, he would probably be going to a president of a point of day to bring back the old, the old, you know, the way we used to play. Right. Yeah, because nowadays it's about the schools, and I don't think that's fair. It's about the ages, and that you know, everybody compete, and that and that. It's about the kids having fun, that's what it's about. Not about the coaches and getting all the, the good players and put them on one team and leave the sorry players who don't have much experience, put them together. And it's not fair at all. So. But it's a big difference. I mean, we used to play baseball, basketball on the streets, mm -hmm. and now it's not quite electronics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we used to go to Fire and play at Devil's Park. I just, uh, well, before I became a gang, TCB. Right. Yeah, we used to kind of run every Sunday over there, or get the whole clover. And, but nowadays, then nobody's out there playing basketball, baseball, blah, blah, blah. And around what time do you remember that it stopped being able to go to that park and the TCB well, came around? Well, I know what happened that uh, in 1990, I moved to Florida. And I, I just came back and uh, 2000, no, I came back in 97. No, no, I, I came back, to, I went to Pro Forward in 97, and I moved right here in 2011, 2012. I came back to the mm -hmm. I was gone for about 23 years. So now when I hear my cousin saying all these rules about how they play now, I said, it's not even, it's not even fun. <laughs> right. It's not even fun. I mean, and every coach has a, I mean, every umpire got their own little rules. I mean, even though they play one game today, one game tomorrow, it's a different game, a different role. So. And who used to take you to your games? Well, we used to walk. We used to walk. Yeah, we'd go on the bike. <laughs> or on the bike. We used to practice. When I was a coach at Mustang, we used to practice at the Austin. And uh, back then, I used to live on Third Street. Mm -hmm. Two, three blocks down. Uh -huh. That's where I grew up. That's where we used to play ball every day on the streets. And uh, we had to stick a canal, go to Austin, and when we were playing cold, we were to practice at the Bear Stadium. Baseball? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go on the bike and practice from Monday to Saturday. Do it. And when we have a game, we have to practice during the week, and then show up Saturday morning and try to correct our problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was good having I mean, something to do, you know, stay out of trouble. And why do you think it was so long that there was no cult? League. Because I guess after Bronco nobody wanted to play, I guess, I don't know. But my coach, uh, he was also my cousin. He okay. went into, you know, all the meetings and they didn't want to uh, sponsor. They didn't want to pay for a uniform or nothing, so we got the cheapest uniform we could get as long as we can form a team. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't have nothing. <laughs> we were just going in my room one year. And the front of me was like light blue and dark blue, so. But uh, I mean, everybody was having fun. I mean, everybody was out there. It was about it was just having fun. Yeah. It didn't matter how much you had to pay, because you knew what you were going to pay. Uh -huh. yeah, and nowadays, I mean, it's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, for everything, you need to pay. If you don't look that shirt. And, <laughs> and when you were growing up, did you hear stories about the pony baseball? Yeah, well, yeah, my cousin, I tell him, I, I, I wanted to bring him here. His name is Alejandro. He, was, he used to play, he played from Mustang all the way to Bronco, but he was uh, known as a home run king. You know, they were here. Home run team? Home run king. Home run king, yeah, he, he was, was known? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Why? 
Yeah, when she was always getting out of the car. <laughs> so the pictures would come in there and throw him at his knees, try to get a ball like he won't play. But he would jump out, she'd jump back and swing it out and you know. And then uh, when we were playing, this other guy named uh, Roy Morgan. He was the one, he was one of the ones to have. He was a big boy, that's why. He was a pitcher. When he pitched, oh, nobody could hit the ball. Because I was a no hitter. But when he was up there to hit, nobody really wanted to pitch at him because we were uh, guaranteed. At least one night, and uh, if he was up there three times, at least guaranteed one of them was going out of the park. So. But back in the day, it was nothing that we had no home to on field, nothing like that. It's about just team ball, you know, the, the, the pitcher would just do, do the motion mm -hmm. and the kid would hit it. And, but now they didn't get coaches pitching to the kids and all that. Yeah. You know. Yes, after she bombed. Yes, yeah, before right. Mustang. Yes, yeah, right. yeah, that's right. Is that the reason we didn't have it? Yeah. No. No, it was just T ball. T -ball. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so your Maribel told us a story, and I don't know if it's your story or someone that you heard, but she told us a story that from your family that um, that the city used to be divided between east and west. Well, I mean, it, it was a, a barrio thing. So a barrio was, thing. Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah, it was. Over the barrios. Yeah, over here we were just called. Uh, <laughs> were, I mean, we weren't called. We were known. But, they were scared to come over here, you know. <laughs> they did, they were just zoom by, you know. We were playing football, they would come by and just, I mean, we, we played every day. That's why we look forward to after school. We played every day in football, down the street, in yeah. Iowa, in Iowa. In Iowa. I brought the uh, tent out here, uh -huh. by the park. That's where we used to play. Every day. We had a three team, one, one had to sit down and play the winner. <laughs> so, I mean, it was, every, every day was a different team. We just scrambled up, you know. We would get that first, we'll form a team, and they would come in. But uh, we played like as a uh, head cat, we would meet them at the Clover. You would meet at Clover yeah, to at play against? Clover, yeah, to play. At the old Clover. At the old Clover, yeah. And then uh, we never played them. Sometimes we'd go to uh, play at the Austin, but we'd play against the Bears. Like, we had you know, a whole bunch of friends play with the Bears. I mean, we, we were not a uh, competition. <laughs> But it was about just playing. Mm -hmm. You know, one time we went for the, we formed the uh, soccer team. And we, played, we used to play against the police department. It's like one police department. And we used to meet at the, uh, like this school was, uh, well, back then it was the uh, Carmen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where we used to play. So, uh, the, police department. the young, the kids from this. This no, barrio? no, us, us. You. The barrio, yeah, from people from the, the barrio. The people? Yeah, our, our, you were our, kids? our friends. We, huh? The kids? Yeah, we were, we were kids. Yeah, and you played the police officers? Later, yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was not a competition against just them. Just having fun. They were, yeah, they were grown men. Right? But like I said, it was more just about the competition. And who would win? Yeah, they were. <laughs> they were <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we show up on Sundays. Just on Sundays, play. just to play them. Just to play them, yeah. Because they would go by, they would go by and see us playing football. Uh -huh. And they would ask us one time, you want to play softball against us? And of course we didn't say no. So we all met at the, at the Carmen. And we, played, we played probably like two or three games against them. And I mean, they beat us bad, but hey, we never got a, a base. I remember we never got a base one game. But, <laughs> but you know, it was about the competition only, you know, having fun, sweating out there and stuff. And how is the relationship between the police officers oh, good, and you kids? Good, yeah, because I mean, I know sometimes they'll pick up some of my friends for PIs, right? But the next morning they'll just let them go, we have no tickets, you know, uh -huh. just to keep them safe. Uh huh. Yeah, so. And you think that has so something to do knows. with the playing softball together and stuff like that? Excuse me? Do you think it has something to do because you guys yeah, got along? Yeah, they knew we were, we were bad kids. I mean, we're just doing our thing, you know, teenagers drinking a beer here and there. <laughs> we were out there like, Robbing, killing people, you know. <laughs> it was just pure time, pure time. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, we show up on everything, like as a cop, we play football as a bitch, like I said, no competition, but it was, it's about playing out there, you know, that's what it was about. But uh, one day, it's just, and it was a lot of politics in baseball. Uh -huh. You had other, like, uh, Guajardo, Navarro, Palacios. 
all the kids would stick together to form one team, you know. And it was hard to get beat, you know, by having to beat them, but once in a while they had a good team and come out there and uh, put a whoop into them, you know. And it was, oh, it was bring them down to earth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and they were flying high, I mean, sometimes they wouldn't even lose a game. Right. Yeah, because they had all the, all the good players, you know. Somehow we were, you know, together since much time. Right. Yeah. And I don't know how they would do the drafting, but they would all stand up together. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. But, but it was, like I said, it was better then, though, than, you know, now, you know. Even though there was a lot of politics involved. I think it's involved. the same now. <laughs> well, the politics, yes. I a, think those those guys are still on the same teams. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, yeah. <laughs> they are, they are. <laughs> I'm not kidding, they are. <laughs> No, they are, yeah. It's like, why is always going to be like that? I don't know why, but they should be, you know, I think best why should go back to the old style, you know, where you got the boys and girls. I mean, it's more competition like that, you know. Boys and girls mix together to form a team, and instead of just forming other boys. Yes. So on that Colt team, did you have any of the Alley Cats and the, oh, and the Stoners together? Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the Colt team we did. You we did? Had, yeah, <laughs> we came together and we formed a team and we even had guys from Alamo. Oh, you had, did? Yeah, we had some guys from Alamo. And everyone got yeah, along? We got players, every player we can just to form a team. I mean, we weren't that good because, like I said, everybody was just different, right? The first, I remember the first year we won one game, <laughs> <laughs> the second year we won two. <laughs> but nobody, everybody would show up to play, you know. Everyone would show up. Yeah, everybody was shocked to make was just, yeah, but it was fun playing ball. Yeah, so. I remember this guy from five, his name was, you know, Colt. His name was J.J. Watts. But he was a, the one we didn't want to pitch to, you know, all the time. No, no team wanted to pitch him. He was probably like six foot, maybe at that time. And he, boom. Or maybe he wasn't that big to me, he looked big. <laughs> But he would always see me out of, out of the uh, best stadium, mm -hmm. the baseball stadium. Wow. Yeah. And I don't know what happened. I mean, I left, and when I came back, uh, my cousin was telling me, I was like, surprised what happened to the, to the Pony League, where he was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, back in the day, somebody hit a foul ball and bring that ball back and get a free home. All the kids trying to get that ball. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, returning in Africa. What did you most get out of playing sports growing up? What do you think you most learned or got out of it? Uh, playing with others, I guess, you know. Not being selfish. Yeah. And, you know, was trying to make the right decision when you get the ball, you know. Sometimes, you know, during the game, you know, during the game, you panic and just run forever. <laughs> but it's almost, you know, trying to stop the like, leading runner, you know. But it was, that's the way it is, you know. When you were coaching Mustang, you know, everybody would be running up to the bottom, but it wasn't me. What are you doing? <laughs> so, you know. Why'd you decide to coach? I had to help out my cousin. And, uh, this guy that's talking about the street, his name was uh, Fred Estrada. He was a head coach. And he needed uh, somebody to do the books, so it was me. Yeah, but back in the day, it was coaches that were really competition, you know. He had uh, Jackie Sanguiwe, Carlos Gomez, Benji Roja, I mean, Kenny Momo, but they were all good coaches. Competition, competition, that's what it's all about. Nobody likes to lose, right? <laughs> no. Hey. Let me see if I can get your cousin. Mighty Ben! Mighty Ben, don't hide. <laughs> Didn't you think yeah. it was an oxymoron? I was talking about this wearing uh, my Bambino I thought it was, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.
And I asked, like, was if we're gonna redo at Joe Box Park with the Pass, like, why can't we reschedule here? That the fielding, no lights. Oh, and that girls play on field with no lights. Yes, the boys. So they don't finish the game. No. Yeah, when we were at Arturo Hadro, four, three years ago, four years ago, they cut off the lights at the softball fields because uh, they were going to get new ones. And then the Austin Middle School was going to get uh, down, so their football lights got donated to the city, but they put them offset of the softball fields where they were going to start doing soccer. But you're holding softball fields where we would get games called for lack of lighting. So they would stop the game like at 7.35, but it was still, sunset still hadn't happened. And I don't remember the name of the Parks and Rec guy. I, I want to say, no, it no. wasn't. This was I want to say Jesse or something. He's black, barbudo, like oh, kind of curly. Morene, morenito. Oh, we're saying he's welcome already. Yeah, the one right beneath Ponce. He yes. was there at the meeting with us and he showed up that yeah. day to the game and like shook the blues in everybody's hands. And like they've never come to a game, and all of a sudden you come to this specific game, and then they call it. I mean, it turned into a big old ruckus to where you could have had Tom Hoppy call, and I don't know if they did, oh my God. but that was a bad game. And I was like, they gotta move mine afar. Hey, that was a bad one, but it. Yeah, sorry. Oh, you, how did you call it, Steve? Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got sleep apnea. Yeah. Yes, I'm sorry. He's awake. No, but I wanted to ask you, why do you, why do you, did you grow, did you ladies grow playing sports? No. With, no, yes. But uh, once no, we yes. were, once we yeah. did, you did it at Valley uh, Christian? No. No, okay. I did Valley Christian, it's a private school in Alamo, and then when we moved at Austin, I did also. But once we went to the high school level, we really didn't. We were more like academic and club based then. So why why do you why do you coach? Me because I want my kids to do that. My mama wanted to do that. Your mom? Why didn't your mom let you play? I don't know. I don't think we were. Asked. Why do you think she didn't let you play? The times were very very different. In what way? We weren't allowed to go to friends' houses. We weren't allowed. Like if we were gonna go somewhere. My mom would drop you off and tell you, oh, it's 5, I'm going to pick you up at 10, I'm going to pick you up exactly where I left. And that's the way it was. But the boys in your family do play sports? We only have one little brother. Right. Uh, you, but you, had, yes. you had cousins. Uh, yeah, they did. They all played through sports. Through Parks and Recs. Uh, their, their time. I don't know if our younger cousin, Richard, did it. Richard, Richard he did, you, he did Pony? He okay, he did uh, Parks and Recs. And then when he went into Austin, he went into uh, UIL. Because he did, he did a memorial in Austin. So why do you think they weren't playing sports? Then. It was more about the athletes, more about the guys, the boys. Because like I said, we didn't have that many females. Even though one of my cousins did play, she was a female. And she played, I think, with the Orioles, I think. I don't yeah, remember. Mary Lou. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but nowadays, it's a kind of full of little girls playing. So I think like, right? yeah. still keep <laughs> In baseball? Yeah. 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 No, I mean, I mean in general. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, like, like what he says, in, in baseball it was rare. Like it was baseball, not softball. Baseball. Yeah. yeah. So you said you, you are a coach because you want Yeah, I did it this year, this spring. And, but you coach other sports. She does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you coach volleyball and the dog. Softball, <laughs> soccer. We're now doing soccer, first and second, and third to fifth. So, but why... Why do you do it? Because there's there's lack of volunteering. No one wants to do it. Mm -hmm. When well, she asked me for me to volunteer, I go, I don't have time. I already have enough time for me. But you coach. Um, and I go to school. I go you to UT or GV, right? and then Alina's team needed coaches. So and they needed a female. Mean. That's why I did it. And they needed a female. Mm -hmm. Why do you say they need a female? Um, on our pony regulations, I read the book and especially the pages that pertain to us. They need if it's. Uh, coach roster of four, they need to have at least a female because we have a minimum of 12 girls. They need to have a female there. Just, it's, I'm assuming it's for the safety of the girls. And since they, we do dress them in a catcher's gear, some, some parents may not want a male to dress their daughter, so we go ahead and we dress them. But our coaches have been great doing it. We've had no issues. Um, our head coach, every game and, and even during the game will tell the girls when they're down and out like for them just to stay humble and kind like the song says and
and that's their motto this season, and that's what they go by. But um, our experience there, from what I had in San Juan and the experience I have with Pal, it's completely different. And um, HubFest this year benefited the Pal program, so a lot of the money revenues that we've sat in and heard will benefit football, will benefit the girls' side, not just the boys. As opposed to over here, we always see everything go towards the boys. And you voice it, we voice it, and you don't see a change. That's why I tell her, go, I would never return my daughter to the city. Right. I, even if I have to move away, then I, and I did, and I moved away, so we could, she could play with Pal. But my daughter, I, this was her last year of coach pitch, and I was like, just give me this one, please. And then she doesn't want to do recreational anymore. So, fine, I won't push it. <laughs> and you said you wanted your daughters to have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. mine, mine like it. Mine want to play, so I will let them. That's the way I tell them. If you want to play, post, I'll sign you up. And if you need a coach, post, then I'll go in. But I've had my volleyball girls, five of them, since they were third grade. We were in all uh, oh, third yeah. grade in a third, fourth grade division. Mm -hmm. And I've carried over. And if you see, I guess it depends on the parents. Um, because it was their... Fourth grade year, her, her fourth grade year, our school wasn't really going to get a, a group. We only had about three girls, and it was a Wednesday, and the closing would be Friday. And back then, it was Lisa and Ralph there at Parks and Recs, and they said, Mari, we don't have a coach. I'll coach. We don't have girls for Clover. We'll have three. Okay. Come Friday, they have 25. We have to get two different teams. <laughs> yeah. That's why Coach Enriquez already knows me. He'll be like, what the? How are they enrollment? I don't know, and I'll call. I said, "How are you on enrolling?" And they'll tell me. And this year, también, uh, they didn't want to break. What was it? Volleyball? volleyball. Volleyball. They didn't want to break it. And I said, "But well, it's not fair. Like you'll break any other thing, but this is a sport that only calls for six girls to play. You can't do 25. Like if, even if it's 15, you can. It's six, six, it's 12, and then you have three. They'll never get like a full playing time." And he said, "Well, it's, we need more girls." I said, "Well, how many do you need?" We need like five. Okay, give me two days. And yeah, within the two days, I got what? Like six or seven more girls, and we got to break the team. Yes. And what does your mom say about your daughter's playing sports? My mom likes mm -hmm. Oh, what's your mom? Yeah. She's just saying mom. I was like, what? <laughs> Everybody. She no, likes she it. likes it. Yes, um, my, my, he's our dad. <laughs> kind of our chef, but he's our dad. He's gone to see all of them play, just about. My mom can when she can. If she can't, she won't go. But my dad, yeah, he'll be the most likely the one to go. They supported my nephew. He's the oldest. He'll be 17. He'll be 17. So when he started Pony, it was with him. And then they migrated into football with him with the city. I am, he's a sophomore this year at Bears. Okay. Yes. And what do you see that it does for your daughters? It's a boost of confidence, but it's also... Um, a sore spot because her oldest is my goddaughter. She can lose and she'll lose gracefully, but she doesn't like losing to somebody that cheated to get the win. Yes. And she you can see it straight on her face. As soon as it happens and you just look at her, just rub it off, we'll take care of it at the end. Just like the awards assembly that we sat in that December. So talk about what happened December 2014. 2014. Okay, mind you, the year before <laughs> we only had 12 teams. Yeah. 12 teams in the third and fourth grade division. Of volleyball. Yes. My place ninth. Good. So we're only third graders. We didn't come in the last. Okay. No cares, right? The following what? year we they go placed from first through sixth. They trophied. Oh, all yeah. those. The schools also. Oh, last year. If you see the schools. No, the previous year. The previous year. Yes. I didn't even know. They, they'll that. trophy the schools sometimes all the way to sixth place. Okay. This Why? time it was only third place. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why two years ago they decided let's just up and change it. We have 15 teams which outrank any other sport three to one. It was 300 and some girls in just third and fourth grade. Why they decide that in football, if it's normal to trophy first through fifth, well not first through fifth, you're gonna trophy first through third and middle fourth and fifth, which is the average about 20 boys per team or less, which I didn't think anything wrong and I just called and make sure our standings are right and I asked, I think it was Lisa, are y'all doing the awards this year? Lisa was a Daryl's job. The other girl. Oh yeah, we are. What what place did Clover come in? Fourth. Oh, and I turn around and I tell my oldest, Oh, Kaylee, you're gonna get a trophy. No, we're gonna only trophy up to third place. 
what do you mean only up to third? It's 15 teams. You can't just medal backwards 15 all the way to fourth place. And not that we were crying because we wanted it. It's just we're it's used to. We're it's used, what they've seen. Yeah, like, we're hey, used to we, new trophies. Six got it last year. We just have to get first through six to get a trophy, like mm -hmm. to get the recognition. And then they get there and they did the boys, which was kind of weird. We started with boys first. They trophy did the Super Bowl champions, then we gave out individual awards, and the girls were looking, and they cheered them on through the whole thing. Well, in their minds, and us two were like, oh, cool, the girls might get an individual award because we had summer Bunch breeze. Of the year. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's <laughs> a step in the face. Like, you get a hard hustle for kids, and I had a girl who cried every game because she wanted to get the ball over, and she was a third grader. I said, Chanel, you're going to get it, Ma, even if it's in the last week, the last three games, her surf finally went over. Then I see them giving a, a coach's award. I was like, hey, dude, that'd be awesome. I hustle my husband anybody, you know, to get <laughs> girls in or help get coaches and whatnot. And then you trophy coaches on football, but you want trophy girls, girl coaches, like, on the girl side? That, that to me, I thought it was kind of unfair. Well, in that awards assembly, when you saw them finish everything, and then you saw adult men let their kids stand up and leave. Instead of, hey, let's sit down, let's cheer the girls on. They cheered for us. Well, uh, when they started leaving, you saw the girls, they weren't even cheering themselves on anymore. And they started 15, 14, 13, to all the way. And then there's nobody left in the San Juan Auditorium. If y'all have ever been in the Osa Dome? See, it's about three, maybe 350 people. And the awards assembly filled it up. As soon as you finished the boys, pretty much half of everybody was gone. And the girls are there. And you can tell it's discouraging because nobody's cheering them on. They're not taking pictures. It was just like, you're mad, I get it, we'll take care of it when this is over. And they finish, fourth place gets a medal, third place gets a trophy, second place gets a trophy, and that. And then, I mean, who are you going to say, oh, thank you for coming, nobody was there for you to thank anymore from the city. So as soon as it was, uh, my sister comes up to me and I go, no, that's just, that's the low, that's not right. And we go up and San Juanita's still there, I think, once it was up on the stage, you had some other parks and recs. And I simply went up and talked to Mayor San Juanita, and I asked her if there was any way we could meet with her, and she's like, well, what's wrong? Go, did we just see two different shows? Because this wasn't right. I go, you all pretty much shopped at the girls and what you did. We all pay the same amount of money, and then we this is what we get. Before, it used to be cheaper. The uniforms were nicer. I mean, everything went a lot smoother. Now we pay more money for a low-income city that you hold, and the product that you're giving out is nothing and I mean you have some parents that may have four kids can't afford a hundred dollars to put four kids in one sport you want to play soccer that's a little bit more money you want to play football that's a little bit more money they can't afford it and you're hiring the money for what to pad your pockets because I mean we've seen the commissioners videos if we don't go to it you just go to YouTube where the Parks and Recs is that how many thousands of dollars where they don't know where that money went then recently you saw the EDC also you all get money from everywhere, but nobody knows where it's going. And then we sat through that one. When spring came for registration, I was like, no, don't even put her in. And then I took my niece to far, and she ended up all star over there. She didn't get to play this year because somebody wanted to take a break in the spring, so she didn't play softball this year. But the experience to see what I saw two years ago to, as opposed to what I've seen these past two years, I would never subject my daughter, and I told him in that meeting, I go, this is not something I want to touch with my daughter in two years. When she's asking me, like, why do boys get this, like, or are you not worth it too? Because that's, and I understood that's how your little girls, and I was 30 at the time, and I'm looking at it in an aspect of an 8, 9, 10, 11 year old, and this is how they feel, and I'm 30 years old. Like, there, it doesn't matter your age, it still makes you feel indifferent. Like, you yourself as a female were not... You're not as special as worthy of what a man or a young man is. It didn't show anything. And I even told him, I mean, it's disrespectful for adult men to stand up and leave when everybody else is giving you the time and day to cheer you on. That was the only time that I ever saw um, the awards assembly actually be more organized because we were never that organized. I, was I, didn't, first think, year. I didn't think it was going to go that awry. But it was the first year that they actually had assigned seating and they assigned you according to your place. So if you're first through third tackle, you'd be over here. First through third or whatever uh, flag, you'd be over here. And volleyball had all the middle and you were one through 15 and then 
parents, everyone else to sit. That was the only one year that I saw there. Yeah, it was good. I didn't think it was going to go that bad, but it was an actual good experience in the beginning. And then every other year before that, it was um, do not leave to the end of assembly. Please clap for everyone, hold pictures, whatever, whatever, whatever. And no, that year was one, two, three, four, five. You wanted it out in 30 minutes or less. Yeah, that's, that's what it was. That's what they try and do. So, and then they said, yeah, we don't hold. You no longer get an orange assembly no. because of what happened yep. that day. That happened that day. Then we, we all get an appreciation cookout. Marvel's yeah. like, everything's burnt. That's what you pay for, not me. Yes, and then we don't get nothing more. I mean, as opposed to our opening ceremonies, we hold them at PSG Stadium. Our closing ceremonies are held at PSG Stadium. This year, we had them at Southwest. Our awards assembly at Bogus Ford. I mean, everything is usable. You're promoted through the city and through the district where the district will allow you to use Bogus Ford. All you have to do is ask. They're not going to charge you. You want to use the stadium. Your program is run through the school board now also. Just ask the school board, and they'll let you use it on a day that they have nothing going on. I messed it up. Sorry. Is there something else you'd like, you'd like to add? about the mural. You it called me one day about the about the mural Just controversy, so tell me. You um, tell us. Oh, when I was telling, because, you know, who was already putting it, and uh, he didn't think it was right <laughs> or whatever. Just about Commissioner Ramirez. Right. He, didn't, he didn't think it was right for that to be done, <laughs> that we, the notice wasn't given, or it wasn't really explained throughout. And I was there at one of the first ones that the... The surveys. Yes, that y'all were doing at the original, and I put on, on Facebook, I said, we were probably one of the first people that they were asking back in, like, October, remember? Mm -hmm. I said it was the awards, it was the picnic for football, volleyball, and I was there with for with both sets. I said, so I was one of them that they interviewed, and my, they interviewed my kids also because they wanted parents and children uh, point of view. So I don't know why you'd say that no one ever asked you, no one showed you, because from what I've seen on the uh, city <laughs> website, they showed you renderings, what it could, what it, you know, like a concept and what people asked and what they could interpret of what people were asking. And he, he told me, well, no, yes, you're right. I just wish parents would understand. I said, but it's an oxymoron because you're kind of saying this, but then you're saying this. Because I know this side already. They don't know, so you're going to tell them this. And then I come in this way and somebody says, well, I agree with what you're saying. I said, because at the end of the day, you're kind of going away from the fact that the rendering is what you said. It's showing four children that can come out, they'll only get out of like what's considered like Ponec Barrio if they're good enough in academic or sports. You're going to get a scholarship and you're going to be able to get out of that. You don't have to fall back where you, where you grew up, you know? You can always come back, but it is, that's what it's supposed to depict. I, said, I don't take an offense or whatever, anything being painted. I go, and my kids participate. You're 40, 50 years old, you don't, you don't volunteer. You don't have any kids anymore in the program. I don't know why they were getting mad on me. So he responded to you? J Jesse did. And other parents and stuff were putting in one of my friends. Her daughter came back to Pony here. She's a teacher at Long, and she asked, what is going on with that pain and stuff? And I told her, because I had just spoken with you maybe like a week and a half before that. And um, she sends me, I get it's in Spanish, where like the thing is supposed to be black, and I don't know what. Oh, yeah, she's yes. Okay. Sorry. And I said, well, I don't, I don't recall in the past five years that thing was black. I, it, you know was, it had wooden uh, science Spanish. sponsorship. Uh huh. And I, was, and I told my sister, if it's either maroon and white or it's got signage all around, what's distracting? Are you the one hitting? No, it's a little boy. And if you're up, your eye is brought to the black back there, well then you're gonna get hit by the ball. You know, like to the picture. It's it's about the game. It's not whatever's put around you. Because now nowadays, what do they want to do? Pay charge three hundred dollars for your signage. That's good for a year. Yeah. Oh, but that's not gonna be distracting. I think uh, he said it's steel-based uh, signage is what they're going to be doing. 300 for one business. If you buy more than that, then they'll bump it down to 200 Yeah. Oh. After, for every initial buy that you do, and if you purchase for more than two years or something like that, you might get another break. And the city asked, like, what are y'all going to do with that money? And once it drifted from the initial concept of what it was supposed to buy, equipment 
for upkeep equipment. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, he just drifts back to football, like pads and helmets. Hey, you got other sports too that need equipment. Do you get do you get volleyballs and you coach? Just a couple. It's like tooth and nail, right? To get it. Yeah, mm -hmm. like two. Yeah, I just go with my coach from my school. Coach, ni ball, you go with that. We had someone donate the money for. Him. Same deal with basketball, soccer. Yeah, yeah. Our coach I just get from my coach. Mm -hmm. Did, would your Dia like to say anything, or would you like to ask your Dia? Anything? Petra, you want to say something, Dia? Mm -hmm. No quieres decir nada. Es lo normal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, no, mm -hmm. que pasara. Even, so even if like, they just ask you, you don't get on video, no, Dia? You can't look anything. any worse than us? No? She has four boys. Just yeah, four, four boys. boys. The baby one, the baby one did more. And uh, where did y'all move to, dear? Florida. 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 Mm -hmm. Florida. 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 Yeah, Edwin James. Yeah. Uh, My brother played with Edwin James in high school football. Uh -huh. He did? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, he used to rock with him. Uh -huh. yeah. He used to yeah. pick watermelons, right? Yeah. Edwin James. Edwin James, tomatoes. And, uh, right there was basically a lot of tomato. I mean, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, agriculture, you know, seed oh, town, yeah. whatever. Yes. Yeah, but uh, a lot of tomatoes. Yeah, she'll give you a great when the wedding guy happened of the uvas and all that. Okay. De las uvas, cuando no compraban. They weren't supposed to cross it. Yo no me meto porque yo me peleo. Mira algo más que estás haciendo y yo te voy a decir. Qué bueno. Así debe ser. Por así lo sacaron ellas. Yo me imagino que es esta la toma familia. Because back then, I guess you couldn't cross the picket line and there was way down right there. My grandma told her, no, don't cross it. You can't buy them. She goes, well, you're going to tell me what I can't buy them. Y la uva de pizca en California van a hacer su marca para allá aquí, no. Políticos meten a sus sus hijos, sus sobrinos, sus nietos, lo que sea y ahí echan su cuchara y no, sí es absurdo. No tiene ningún sentido. So I told them, look, you know, I only have three girls. I'm not gonna make a big fuss, and the parents really don't want to push it because they know who the other coach is, and they know that that team. They have pony elite over there. Yes. Yeah. Well, oh we don't God. have a pony. We have to register with West Coast. Yeah, oh, with West Coast. So we oh, have a team, but we register with West Coast. West Coast. Oh, yeah. Have you seen their uniforms? Oh yeah. Oh my God, they're like professional <laughs> things. I'm like, thank. Stay away from them. <laughs> when you see those, that's not really, that's not really a Parks and Rec team. Yeah, that's a travel team. That's a new yeah. travel team. You're yeah. paying for this. I was yeah. like, zebra's travel. But, but it, it ties in Your with what they're doing. Your mess is there. Yes. <laughs> when we go through tournaments, like, sometimes it's not fair because you're playing at Parks and Rec that only plays together six, seven, eight weeks. And then you play As the opposed to somebody that travels for a No, so when here. I went to that tournament, I saw it and I said, <laughs> yeah, we gave pointers to our city, like we knew when someone took shockers. Well, that's like little, that's Wajadro Bay. No, 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 I got the shockers are in my Mustang League. Este, oh, and we have the coach aggressive. pitch. They all bumped up. The Mustang, because they, they, they moved What up. are they playing the under? Mustang. Lady Tigers. Okay, didn't you think it was a big coincidence that this year they don't represent their school? No, they do. They, no, they. No, we, they made us pick college names. Uh-huh. And the reason they made us pick college names is so that they wouldn't let them use their, at least they wouldn't let them use their uniforms and gear. Okay, but how many are in your division this year? Only four. Thank no, you. five. How many do we and have And there's only year? one of them that does not have a complete ski team. 
Thank you. Which one's that one? The combination of who? This is Sorensen. This is aggressive. Pero you have Carmen in there, Sorensen in there. Exactly, it's Carmen and Sorensen. Yes. That means la risa. Yes, están, pero sweeping everybody. That's not the way it should have been. For the last two years, they went school based because they wanted more money. It is school based. Everyone except that. No, they do not but wear. It's, it's it's not. Por qué? Read them all. Put them all your girls from Romina. Oh, oh, okay. There's read them all, and then there's Cantu, of course. Mm -hmm. And después is uh, Trevino. Mm -hmm. Es pues Adam, and then there's Dorans. Uh -huh. Es pues está en ese. But but that one should be the combination of Clover, Carmen, and Sorensen. Yeah. Because Clover did not pull out a full team. The only right. one pulled out, I think, is Janelle. From I think they there. sent Clover to go guys. Thank you. And that's not the way it should have been. It's supposed to always merge Clover they, with Sorensen. They, they, they girls struck out nine girls in a row. I'm my Amorenita. Yeah. Larissa. Mm -hmm. Sorensen. She's been pitching with Lady Devil since she was four years old. <laughs> When my when my daughter was a third grader, first year bumping up, Larissa would pitch, but she was only like the reliever pitcher for our our fifth grade from Clover. And when Emily could everyone pitch, else is there, and third grader. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then I told my husband when we put the all star names up, I'm not even putting my daughter's names. But you I don't even know. want them. It's the entire team. The entire, the, the entire team. Why would I want to suffer through this? Another six. They brought a Garza Peña softball. No. I don't even know. I'm sure. I don't know. Aggressive pitcher. She's playing with with that one. With theirs? No. She would stand in with aggressive pitcher. She's like Chinese looking. She's a, she's a Garza Peña girl. You see, she's not supposed to be with merger over there. Let's she see. should merge she's with either. Of the express uh -huh. She should merge with Trevino or she should merge with Donut. Right. She should not merge with the well, South she Side is. Girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But see, the reason as I tell you, they're not school based. You are when it's Except school based. Except for the ones that are all school. Yeah. School but yeah, and you'll know. But the thing was, when we say school based, your kids would wear Clover. Your kids would wear Read and Mock. Right. And if they even merged, like uh, Brandy did one year, she merged both mascots of the school. So you had uh, bear, bear cubs. cubs. We didn't pick one over the other. She just no. I'll leave both schools to represent both schools. And she did it like that. There, they still represented their schools. Now, when you switch to, we want college names like FAR does for the girls, and they've always done it. They've never represented their schools, unless it's volleyball and basketball. But softball is always uh, university-based teams. Yes. And now they automatically switched over this year, but they completely removed the identity of the school. So when her coach was asking, like, uh, give me the list of the girls so we can buy them a trophy for representing their school, and I was like, you can't get softball. Why not? Because they don't wear clover. I would, and I'm under the impression that, yes, if you had eight girls and I only had three, they'll carry your name because your school has more contributors. That's the way it should have been. That's how it should be. And that's how they've always had it, and all of a sudden it's like one league bumps up and... No, 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 no. The so next time... Softball there is I forewarned far before tournament started. I'd go at this certain color, and we looked at the tournament roster, and I'm like... This one will get you. And we had automatically first round undefeated San Juan against undefeated FAR. They lost four to three small errors. That's all it was. They're good enough to beat each other. And she's like, yeah, but the calls were in favor of the Shockers and not of the Aggies. And I give you, the Aggies, yes, they sweep our division like nothing. First game, we lost one to nothing. The second time we played them, I think we lost four to one. The third time, the girls just like, just gave up. Yeah, they whipped their butts 11 to nothing because they didn't want to play. And then the last game, I think they lost 10 to nothing. But I, I, know, I, we were I don't even know why they do it. They don't get better. Um, when, you, when you have a team like that playing in this, you don't get better. And most of these, they play together since T-ball, and this is their second year in coach pitch. Yeah, but I always say it's slap of reality when they go to self pitch because you're on your own now. Nobody controls your fate there. Yeah, unless you have a pitcher. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and most of those are walk-ons. But even at that, once they go into middle school, mm -hmm. your UIL, it's you're good, you're good, you're not, you're not. There's a, everyone makes it. It's gotta stop. Oh yeah. You know what I mean?